Flash is officially dead. Browsers have ceased support for the plugin, leaving many older games and animations to bite the dust. Despite this, many websites have adapted to continue their service for years to come. God bless Cool Math Games. Not only that, but there has been a devoted team of people dedicated to archiving all that the internet has to offer. Today, I'll be going through Flashpoint and taking a look at the good, the bad, the popular, and especially the obscure of Flash games. Wish me luck. Let's start off team with something widely recognized and loved, escaping the prison. Oh, it's you. You're free to go. <laughs> Not really. This is a title in the Henry Stickman series, and the first one I've ever played. These games are like a goofy choose-your-own-adventure story with various branching paths and multiple endings. Really, it's less about playing the game and more about the humor. Because these games are comedy gold mines. What the Later entries in the series expand on the humor and pop culture references, but Escaping the Prison is a great entry point to the series. In fact, the whole series got a remaster a few months ago with the Henry Stickman collection. Gorgeous redesigns of all the games, plus a massive final chapter for 15 bucks on Steam. Check it out if you're into cheeky internet cartoons and crafting your own journey. Alright, one down and a bunch more to go. Let's check out QBs online. Oh boy. This is a simple puzzle game where you need to eliminate these blocks based on if more than one of the same color is touching. And if you try to make an invalid clear... I feel very uncomfortable all of a sudden. It's a really easy puzzle game, but one that oozes personality and animation. These little guys' constant mantra of color name together or cubies together brings a lot of charm to an otherwise ordinary puzzle game. Pretty good one, I'd say. And look at that, over 3 million points. That's gotta be a great score. Let's submit it and see where we stand. I think I won. Alright, let's cool off a bit then with some Lemonade World. Pretty simple stuff here. You gotta manage a lemonade stand and work your way up to riches. You grow lemon trees, pick ice, buy cups and sugar, and sell your lemonade. It's a pretty chill game, no pun intended. <laughs> you can adjust some things here and there, but most of it is just sitting back and watching the profits come in. Or at least that's what I was hoping would happen. Look at all these folks passing me by. Is 75 cents too much for you people? This game is a quaint little simulation activity. Calm yet motivational music, simple character designs, and even the ability to save and load multiple save files? Okay, that's actually pretty cool. A neat time waster, not bad at all. Well, looks like after 30 days I amassed a whopping $60. That could buy me a nice pizza. Alright, what's next? Oh, oh Mr. Men Show Microsite? I remember enjoying that show as a kid. Yeah, let's give it a go! Oh. Oh no. I feel I've made a terrible mistake. Apparently the Japanese site was archived, but not the English versions. Okay, I mean, it still works, you can watch videos and play a bunch of minigames with these characters, but I can't understand most of what they're saying. Now I don't know what Mr. Rude wants of me, but I assume he wants me to pull his finger? Yep. Now I'm gonna make a mask for Little Miss Scary to jump scare me with. Wait, why would I want to be jump scared? Yeah, I think I'm about done here. This next game is Winnie the Pooh's Home Run Derby. Before starting though, I have many questions, including why this game is categorized in the Rage for the Ages category in Flashpoint alongside Quop and the World's Hardest Game. But it's a Winnie the Pooh game, it really can't be that bad, right? Right? Okay, I was wrong. The game isn't terrible, it's just way more difficult than you would expect from a game of this nature. You need to score a lot of home runs. Normal hits don't count. Poo slides around like a figure skater. It's doable, but it's pretty challenging with how demanding the home run requirement is. Well, I made it to stage three. That's a win in my book. Think I'm done with this one for now. Burger time, what is this? Oh, 
Oh. Turns out it's the arcade game fully remade in Flash. It's kinda janky and slow, but it's functional. Problem is, there's no audio at all, so nothing really hits home for me. Also, instead of Peter Pepper, we play as this chonker. Next. This here is the Candy Machine Deluxe. Should be fun. You need to help the Eds make a wacky invention to drop their jawbreakers into the bucket below. Easy point A to point B game, but some of the pieces you can use are pretty bizarre. Anything from a shower stall to a microwave oven or volcano or even an actual human organ. This is kind of messed up, not gonna lie. But this is a solid little minigame for a solid little show. Moving on. What about, uh, Kick the Cheat? <laughs> Self-explanatory. How about Paxon Deluxe next? Described as a fusion of Pac-Man and some Kix clone, I don't know. You have to claim chunks of the playfield like so, avoiding ghosts along the way. They all travel in different ways, but Blinky is undeniably the worst one, since he can take parts of your hard work away. You even get fruit power-ups to change the speed of you or the ghosts, freeze the ghosts altogether, and there's even the classic power pellet. Gotta say, it's pretty fun in short bursts, and I remember having a lot of fun with this game as a kid. However, there is one glaring flaw. It's super repetitive. All the levels are identical. Same shape, same grid size, same percentage goal. The only thing to change is the ghost quantity and placements. It gets dull really fast, especially when you have to beat... 9, 18, 50? 50 levels?! Why would anyone want to go through this 50 times?! <laughs> Screw this, I'm done. Ah, Super Mario Bros. Crossover. A true Flash gem. This is a full recreation of Mario 1, but look at all these characters! Mega Man, Link, Simon, Bill... And these guys aren't just sprite swaps, they have their own full movesets based on their original games. But on top of that, each character has a variety of alts to choose from. Different designs from different games, or even different characters altogether. So if you ever wanted to play Mario as a Tetramino on wheels, I have good news for you. This is a really high quality version of Mario that uses a ton of different aesthetics and features. Full screen, sprite mixing and matching, cheats, and even the option to play Lost Levels or the elusive Super Mario Bros. Special. No joke, this is one of the best unofficial ways to play the original games. I highly recommend it. Moving on, we have Rabbit Droppings, and don't let the name fool you, this game doesn't have to do with crap, it itself is crap. You have to shoot down these rabbits and cause as much damage to them as possible. Plungers, electrocution, and drinking Capri Suns for some reason. Yeah, this is a cross-promotion game and I don't get it either. It's fine, I guess, but I recommend turning down your volume for this one, because every play session will go down like this. Try listening to that nine times in a row. Oh god, finally over. And oh heck yeah, I can't wait for Rayman Raving Rabbit's TV party to come out a decade ago. How about a Spongebob game to wash out our mouths? Bikini Bottom Carnival. Parts 1, 2, and 3? All three, all in one place? Apparently this game was released in chunks with new content available with each release. Whatever, let's just go. Whoa, a two-player mode? That's actually pretty cool, but I'll stick to one player for now. So we have nine minigames to choose from, got my work cut out for me. Let's start with Sunday Splatter. You just need to press the keys it tells you to press to make Sundays. There's no penalties or anything, you just have to press the keys. I made a whopping 36 Sundays before I got bored and gave up. Next game, Deep Sea Sharpshooter. What on earth are these controls? You hold S to move the reticle up and press space to shoot. Shoot plankton, shoot Mr. Krabs, shoot these random fish. But don't shoot your friends, they'll cost you points or time. This game is so broken! Not only are the controls bad, but the hit detection is so off! Every single time a smaller target comes up, I always miss. And I'm really not a fan of the use of farting in the background music here. Game 3, Ring Fling. It's just ring toss. You hold down the spacebar to build up power, but these hermit crabs seem a lot closer than they actually are. Not much else to say here. Next game is Catch'em! 
Catch the yellow stars while avoiding the pink ones and the jellyfish. And, oh god, the fart music is back. This game works pretty well, but it's so boring. I feel this is one that excels in multiplayer, though. Trying to get more stars than your opponent and sending obstacles towards them sounds like a blast. It shows some promise, but in single player mode, it's another no go. Whack an eel. It's just a lamer whack a mole. Press the keys to hit the eels, except only one shows up at a time. At first. After some time, it goes from way too easy to way too hard. Multiple eels show up at once, each one popping up for only a second. And with how slow the mallet animation is, I can't score any points. This is garbage. Next is Puffer Pop. This is another one with unorthodox controls, except this time it actually works kinda well. Hold down both S and F to charge power, and then let go of one of the keys to determine direction. Try and throw your pickles into the pufferfish's mouths. Not a bad minigame, I'll be real. See your strength. Just mash the spacebar to build up strength. Kinda dull, but what do you really expect from something like this? Although I'm really not a fan of Spongebob's increasingly into it facial expressions, so let's just move on. Basket Barrel is like Sunday Splatter, except good. Press the keys it tells you without running out of time or messing up. Wait, what? Actual time limits? Penalties? A fair yet challenging difficulty curve? Guys, I think we found the one. This might be the best one of the lot. That doesn't say much, but I actually had fun with this one. Good job, Basket Barrel. And last up, tic tac -curacy. It took me a long while to figure out the controls for this. You hold down S and D to move the reticle along the X and Y axes while Spongebob just automatically throws these... Potatoes? The game calls them pearls, but I don't know any pearls that look like that. I can't believe they took something as simple as tic-tac-toe and corrupted it with these bizarre controls. Not terrible, but not great either. And that was Bikini Bottom Carnival. Certainly not a prize winner. Let's just, uh, move away from this. Mind Impulse. Sounds badass. And it's a brain training game. You go through different rounds of exercises to test your mental skills as fast as possible. Some of these really tripped me up like this clock minigame, but then others were, you like math? 244 seconds, you say? Let's see how I stack up against everyone else in the world. Moving on. This is ABCD Watermelon, an educational game from Between the Lions. The name just intrigued me too much, what can I say? Really simple game, just pick the next letter in the alphabet. Here it would be F, pay your respect boys. But it just drags on and on. I know this game is for kids, but if the point of the show was to teach kids to read, chances are they already know their ABCs. Damn it, I expect better from this show. A water pipe has burst in the basement. The books are floating everywhere. Well, ask and you shall receive. Flood tasks kids with choosing three out of the five books that match. These categories can be anything from measurements to animal noises, and it was a lot of fun even with how easy some of these could be. Now this is what you call a Between the Lions game. What am I doing with my life? Let's move on to a Koopa's Revenge. Koopa's friend Goomba was having a birthday party when Koopa had the sudden urge to visit the little Koopa's room. Then. The party was crashed. Koopa returned to find the party in disarray. If only Bowser had been there to defend them. Koopa has only one option. Revenge. Yep, works for me. On to the game. And it's decent. The concept is pretty neat, playing a Mario game as a Koopa. Your shell is the replacement for the mushroom, and you can still get coins, fire flowers, etc. However, these controls honestly aren't the best. Gravity feels really wonky, and you continuously jump if you hold space. Okay. Hey look, it's baby Mario! Time for some sweet stomping payback. Let's go! Okay then. In terms of an actual game, it's not the best. Controls are crap and the drawn characters are pretty basic, but I need to repeat, the concept is pretty rad. 
playing through a Mario game backwards and getting your sweet revenge as a Koopa Troopa. I applaud whoever made this for that alone. What now? Uh, Newman... Wait. Newman Ultra Microscopic Silica Volcano Kaniasis. Screw it. Numa Numa. So what is Numa Numa, you may ask? It's a shoot 'em up what else? You play as a white blood cell and shoot up bacteria, all while listening to an unsettling heartbeat in the background. Not the most in-depth, but you gotta love the health pickup sound. 10 out of 10. Worth playing for these sound effects alone. This next game is called, and I kid you not, Hide the Fart. Your task is to rip one discreetly and relieve some pressure. If it gets to be too much... Here we have Interactive Buddy. Dang, this brings back memories. You get a little buddy to fiddle around with. Throw objects at him, tickle him, or do what most people did. Punch him. And you can buy so many different items and skins to use. So many different forms of torture. This game is an embodiment of everything from the early 2000s. Gratuitous violence, Napoleon Dynamite... Idiot! And an advertisement for DeviantArt, how classy. But easily the best part is this Teletubby skin, and let me tell you, it is so satisfying to beat up this purple bastard. Teletubbies. Teletubbies. Say hello. Such a fun nostalgia trip. You haven't lived until you've played Interactive Buddy. Here's yet another popular one you may have played, Fireboy and Watergirl in the Forest Temple. Yeah, this game is kinda meant for two people, but it's still serviceable as a single player experience. It's a puzzle platformer where you need to guide Fireboy and Watergirl to the goal while grabbing all the gems you can. Some of these puzzles honestly can be really challenging with these pools that kill the opposite elemental and this green stuff that kills both of them. You even have three different types of levels. You have these normal levels, some easier levels that task you with moving the two simultaneously, and these green gem puzzles where there's only one gem to collect before reaching the end. Honestly, I really wish these games were a lot more popular. I would love to see a huge console sequel to this series. But alas, I guess some things are bound to the era they originated in. Still, it's really worth checking out these original games. Solid gameplay, cute visuals, good music, and overall Flash Hall of Famer. Uh, this one's just called Fat Dora Eat Eat Eat. Joyforgirl.com? Oh god, you're one of those games. It's simple, just click to toss away the garbage. I really don't know what to say, I'm frankly disturbed by all of this. Number 15. Let's try a more official Dora game next, Dora's Carnival Adventure. Hola, soy Dora. I'm gonna regret this, aren't I? Well, 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 we get a whopping six save files here? Choke on that lemonade world. So here we are, Dora's Carnival. There are ten minigames in all, and Dora has to say the name every time you move your mouse over it. Well, air hockey's always fun, so let's head there first. And it's alright! It's not as hectic as real life, but it's functional. Although I couldn't score against Swiper for the longest time. Defensive champ, that one. But look at this massive comeback! Mm. Got 10 tickets for my troubles. Sweet. Next activity. So we have a spinning wheel with different colors. Gotta place my bets on my favorite color, orange. Alright, that didn't work. Uh, orange again! Don't fail me this time, orange! Now we got a Bumper Cars minigame, just gotta ram into these guys at the right time. Such a great minigame, simple controls, multiple levels, and a thoughtful lesson in taking your aggression out on your enemies. This next one is Thirsty Dolphins. You know, like those water spray things. Gotta hose water into the dolphins' mouths and it's honestly pretty chill. Big fan of this one. Hey, oh, oh no you don't you little scamp, ha ha ha. Okay, I'm officially hooked, let's see what this bubble game is all about. It's Pac-Man. It's literally just Pac-Man. Moving on. Alright, we got a sled race next, and I don't know how I feel about none of them actually gripping the handles. 
just trace your way down the slide and don't bump into the sides. Easy stuff. Actually, scratch that, it only gives three tickets as opposed to the other's ten, so maybe don't do this one. Bowling is next, and it's fine. The ball doesn't curve or anything, and it seems kind of random what pins get knocked down. I got a spare almost every single time. You're really good! Am I, Benny? I can't tell if I'm too good or if there's really no difficulty to this. Whichever it is, I'm way better at this than real life bowling. This next one is a crane game with boots. You can't really miss in this, just click to line up the claw and pick up all the boots. You're good at this! Wait, what? There are whole ass diamonds in here? Screw the tickets, I'm playing for these! Now we have the very creatively titled Basket Game. Alright, just go for the middle one, get them shuffled around. Easy, the one on the left. Wait, that was it? No extra rounds or anything? Man, screw this one. Screw you, baby bird. And finally, our last game, the hot air balloon race. that was Dora's Carnival Adventure. I kinda hate to admit it, but I actually kinda had fun with it? It was a lot better than Bikini Bottom Carnival anyways. Actually fun mini games, and you get a bunch of tickets for winning them. Speaking of which, let's go redeem them, shall we? So it looks like we can get some little printables and other doodads, including a whole custom screensaver for 300 tickets. Gonna take a lot of dedication for that. But I'm not gonna be the one to do it. Before we start this next one, I need to point out this amazing intro. Be less bored. Okay, I'm officially sold. This is meal or no meal. Alright, gotta place my order to start. Gotta go with lucky number 13. And now 6 to eliminate. How about 11? Damn it. If it wasn't obvious already, this is a deal or no deal parody. All the money values here have foods assigned to them, from pretty gross ingredients to delectable dishes. Gotta end up with the best meal possible. Not doing too hot so far, maybe number 8 will be good? Do people actually eat the cigarette butts? The chef's now offering me something called- oh son of a bitch, not you again. Well, it looks appetizing enough and the price point looks good, so I'll take it. And it looks like I ended with a good deal. Always was more of a sweet tooth anyways. And our final stop of the day is... Do I even need to say anything about balloons? You've played it, I've played it, it's a flash phenomenon. What started as such a simple puzzle game about shooting balloons exploded in popularity. Even if these bouncers are the bane of my existence. Level 16, Boomer. Uh-oh. Don't you dare say it in the comments. Chances are you've played at least one of Balloon's sequels or spin-offs, including the widely popular Balloon's Tower Defense series. It even has its own Wikipedia article, what? I don't think I need to say any more about this masterpiece. Balloon's just... is. So, there you have it. 24 Flash games from years past. Some of them from kids shows, some from the Hall of Fame, and some totally underground. I know I missed a bunch of really big ones, but hey, that's what the comments in future videos are for, right? Not all of the games that were shown here today were winners, but I feel that's the beauty of it. Flash allowed anyone and everyone to make a game and share it online, and now that it's no longer supported, that same kind of magic just isn't there anymore. Of course, one could argue that mobile games have taken their place, but honestly, they don't have the same charm that Flash games once had, especially with some charging you money as opposed to just being totally free on the internet. And besides, I would much rather blow up Napoleon Dynamite than a generic Circle Man any day of the week. 